talk. <laughs> hey friends, it's Akadiris. So in one of my previous videos, I went to the Tokyo Fire Department's disaster learning facility, and I was kind of thrown into a simulation of an earthquake, a typhoon, a flood, a burning building. I think there was one where I had to push a car door with water pressure on the other side. You know what, since I've shown you guys of what it's like to go through a facility that prepares you for disasters, I'm gonna show you guys of what it's like to prep your apartment, specifically in this case, my Japanese apartment from natural disasters, because Japan, we get a lot. I'm just gonna get this out of the way. A lot of you watching this right now who live outside of Japan might still live in a place that's pretty prone to natural disasters. Unfortunately, a lot of the products I'm gonna show you here are kind of specific only to Japan, so it's really hard to find overseas. But what I did do, for those of you that are paranoid, just like me, and if you wanna prep your apartment, I will link down below an Amazon list that I made of all these different types of items. I had to go online and just look for a bunch of things similar to what I would get if I were to prep my own apartment or house. You guys wanna go check that out by the end of this video, feel free to go check that out. Now, before I get into the tour, I'm gonna show you guys a few products that I did buy off of Amazon that I'm gonna be installing later. I don't know what the appropriate English term for these are, but they're basically wedge boards that you put underneath your furniture to stop it from moving. The reason why it's a wedge board is so that it changes the center of gravity so that the furniture, whenever the apartment or the house is shaking, your furniture just gets pushed up against the wall. I actually have a lot of these around the house, but for Joey's room, there's a lot of new things that he bought that is not earthquake proof right now. So I'm gonna go into his room and install these. Okay, so this is a new shelf that Joey just bought and it is not earthquake proof yet. This came as a roll, I just realized. So I just cut a little piece here and I just wanna show you guys more details to it. This is all of the wedges. And then as you guys can see, it is slightly inclined. It, it, more. Okay. <laughs> Time to give it an earthquake test. Oh, I'm sorry, Joey. Big yeah, I know. I have to say, these products are meant for a pretty morbid reason, but the way that they advertise is so cute. You've got like Wedge Boy and Elephant Boy here, both trying to block your furniture from toppling over. And those of you that follow Joey, he actually tweeted out a video of him catching one of the earthquakes online. Oh. Oh. That's an earthquake. Oh, that's an earthquake. Aki, are you alright? Some of you may be wondering what I was doing during all of that, and, well, I was just, uh... You know, when you live here for a long time, you just kind of get used to it. It's to a point where I'm like, oh, it's not a level five. Oh, I'm fine. The next product I got is sort of this lock for your cabinets. This is really good for cabinets that have dishes inside or a lot of stuff that can fall out whenever there's an earthquake. I'm on Amazon right now and the closest that I could find to that product were these. It was this thing. It's called a child safety strap lock. It's basically the same concept. And combined with this, I would like to think that no dishes will fall out. I got this, but then I realized that our kitchen cabinet is actually like built into the wall and it already has a lock built into it that prevents it from opening on its own. So I don't know if I need this, but I'm gonna keep it just in case and maybe I can find something for it. The next thing I got for the apartment were these sort of like tension bars. That's what I'm gonna call them. So if you guys can see on the image, the purpose of these is to put it on top of a cabinet and have it connect from the top of the cabinet to the ceiling so that when there's an earthquake, it centers itself so it doesn't fall over. The only thing I don't like about these is that they are so big and bulky and they just don't look good, but it's aesthetics versus saving your life. So I'm going to look around to see if we have any cabinets that need this. This is like the last room I wanna be in during a major earthquake. Just saying. Why? Cause this stuff scares me. That stuff scares me. Oh, well, that's why we're earthquake proofing it, aren't we? It sure is. That's not moving at all. Yeah? Yeah. They're both stable now. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Can you uh, step down and then we can shake this? Keep going. <laughs> See them? <laughs> Nothing. It's like I'm, it's like I'm pantomiming. <laughs> <laughs> this thing ain't moving. This, this, thing's <laughs> this thing's not moving. Yeah, your waifus are safe. Yeah. Um, you're giving me permission to possibly damage your figures, right? Well, I mean, I know the numbers to your credit cards, so. No. Oh! 
<laughs> no! Oh, God, wait, wait, I must salvage this. Look, given how hard I just shook that and only this little one fell, I think that you're, you're pretty much good. One more Earthquake product I wanna show you guys are these Earthquake gel pads. These are everywhere around the house, even under these figures. This is probably one of my favorite pieces of Japanese technology when it comes to earthquakes. It's just really, really sticky gel. You can cut it up to different sizes and put it underneath something and it helps keep it in place. And I'm telling you, this stuff is extremely sticky, but it doesn't leave any residue on you. So if there's anything, a lot of people have probably heard about Japanese architecture, it's that a lot of buildings in Japan are specifically designed to withstand earthquakes. A lot of them have huge springs underneath. A lot of them are built certain ways from the inside where it sways back and forth. So I'm gonna demonstrate how this works as well as how Japanese technology under the buildings work. It's a very loosely put together demonstration, but hopefully this gives you an idea of what happens. So pretend that this piece of cardboard is the floor and here's your house. Earthquake happens. Technology. House on top, it doesn't move. But can it do this? Yep, it, it won't move. You might be wondering how much do these cost? I got these from the dollar store for guess what? A dollar, a hundred yen. Really, like just a dollar to save you thousands of dollars of damage? Definitely worth your investment. It's weird because as strong as they are, they're really easy to just take off. Just like that. I found something that looks pretty much the same on Amazon, so if you guys want to test it out, you can. So I've shown you guys the products. I'm gonna film myself installing them, and then I'm gonna give you guys a nice tour of what we have around our apartment to get ready for disasters. Earthquake, think he gonna sneak up on me? Hell no! So I'm going to take you to my prize collection of figures over here, and as you guys can see, there is nothing to protect them. They could fall at any moment, but Feast your eyes down below and there is a wedge board that I know it doesn't look like it should do much, but it actually does. We're gonna give it an earthquake test. <laughs> One thing fell down and it, it, look, I didn't have anything under it. Forget this, look, look how many actually still stayed on. Can you do some zoom-ins? Yeah. The only thing that fell was Gundam Kitty. But Isabel, she's good. You're good. Uh, Atelier Riza, Miku, me. Yeah, she good. That's the most important bit. All right, let's continue with the tour. Okay, so over here in this corner was the thing that I was really paranoid about the most. It's my bookshelf and there was nothing to cover this at first. So if it toppled over, it would cause a lot of damage. But down below, I do have two little wedge boards. And just to, again, show you a little demonstration, I'm gonna do an earthquake test. I don't know about you, I can't see anything budging from here. No. And just so you know, like nothing is secured in, like, you know, this, this is just in here. My books, you know, they're all right here. And my figure, it's, there's not even those little earthquake gels, but I shake this as much as I can. It's just banging up against the wall. So I have actually more faith that this will not fall down more than anything on there. This is pretty secure. Look at Otto, she's just chilling, man. He chilling. He chillin'! Oh, yeah, let me show you. Uh, also, a lot of you know, I'm a plant mom and I gotta take care of my plants. This has scared me for a very long time. So I put earthquake gel underneath the plant pots here and it should prevent like my cactus and my ficus from falling. So again, earthquake test. The fridge. There's nothing interesting about it. But next to it, we have the fire extinguisher, which I just recently bought because of the disaster video that I did at the uh, Tokyo Fire Department. Since I learned how to use a fire extinguisher, I was like, oh, great, I can use one. But I don't have one. So I bought one. And then another thing I bought, it will be right by this first aid kit. I put it conveniently by the stove because this is probably where a fire is most likely to happen. Um, if for whatever reason it you need something just really quick, this is a fire blanket and it has the directions in English and you just have to pull these two tabs, flip it out and you got your fire blanket and then you just have to put it over the flame. 
hopefully we never have to use this, but you can never be too careful. I'm just a really paranoid person, so this is just a really good investment. So now for our living room. This is one of the biggest things that you should always protect because this is where your television is and everything. So we have this pretty big TV stand here, and the only thing that is not secured is this TV. And I found online recently that there are little straps that you can like put on the back of the TV to prevent it from like toppling over. And what it should do when an earthquake happens is just kind of like go like this. But I don't have that yet, but I do have it on the Amazon list, which I will link down below if you guys want to get one for yourselves. But what I do have is three really big wedge boards underneath the TV stand here. Oh, what? That was about to fall. Oh, just him? That's what you like to. Yeah, but I mean like, you know, it's not like everything started falling. So the whole point of this isn't supposed to like tell you it's gonna be foolproof. Like things are going to fall. But it's just like minimizing as much damage as you can for the inevitable. Ah, yes, I forgot to show you guys something very important. My art. No, um, it's actually this thing. So for those of you that may or may not have seen my tour video of our new apartment when we moved in, because I didn't even like cover it in there. I don't think anyway. But what it is, is a fire door. And technically our apartment is like two apartments in one. So what this is for is that if one side of the apartment catches on fire, this will automatically open and block off both parts of the apartment so that the fire does not spread to the other side. It does suck, yes for the person that is on the side with the fire. But also our apartment has, um, what do you call them? Like, uh, fire escapes. Yeah, fire escapes. I don't know. A lot of people were wondering what was behind here and why I wasn't talking about it. There was like a whole bunch of conspiracies. No, it's just a fire door. Actually, I think it's just a wall behind here. I do use this sink as a storage area for emergency supplies. And what I have in here is just some extra rice. I have some emergency toilet bags, and then I also have like some gas canisters along with a portable gas stove. This is something I've just wanted in general, but this is really good to have when the power goes out. And so depending on how long a blackout can last, it's always good to have extra canisters with you. And then may I also add the fact that my mom just sent me some food from America. So, you know, desperate times call for desperate measures and this is one of them as a backup. I know it doesn't last forever, but I gotta keep something from home in case something happens. All right, so let me take you now to our tatami room. It's a little messy because Joey was just recording in here, but you guys may recognize these two really big manga shelves from all of Joey's videos. This is where he records and this is also one of the things that I was really worried about that would really like topple over because there's just so much stuff. But actually, believe it or not, even though it doesn't have the tension bars at the top, this is really secured, <laughs> even though there's like nothing blocking. So when we first moved in, the moving company was nice enough to install these things that they had uh, that were specifically for earthquakes. And it's like these really huge mats that just absorb all the shock. You can shake this as much as you want and it, it won't topple over. Like Joey, you might want to do it since it's your bookshelf. Okay. <laughs> it's like doing a little dance. <laughs> you look like you're like raging against your manga. Keep going. Ah! Come on, Joey, you can do it. <laughs> it's so heavy. Like it actually doesn't move. I mean, to be fair, it does have like what? 200 books at least in this one book. Yeah, so that's this helping, is double layered. This is helping to weigh it down. One last piece of advice that I do want to give um, that we really had to take into consideration is when you're getting a new place or whatever is you need to kind of determine where's the safest room to go hide when there is an earthquake. And for us, it's either the bathrooms or our master bedroom. Now, the reason why the bathroom would be really good, at least from our logic, is that there's really nothing in here to damage. And the second place that we would probably go to in the case of an emergency is here. Uh, because the reason why the master bedroom we thought was the safest is because again, there's nothing above us that's really that bad. I mean, if things were toppling over in here, we could even just like go under the bed. Regardless of how prepped that this apartment is, maybe something will happen in the future where we have to evacuate. So right next to the front door is 
It's not here. What the fuck? Wait! <laughs> Go back! <laughs> You saw nothing! Well, what normally is in there is this. This is my emergency backpack. There is a lot of stuff in here because I'm a very paranoid person and I feel I've overcompensated. A lot of you may want to know what's in here, but that will take forever. So that will be the next video on what I put in my emergency backpack. Stay tuned in for that. So that was it for the tour, guys. Look, the thing is, is that I don't want this video to instill fear into anyone. I know it sounds scary when it's all in one video, you know, showing you how much we've prepped for disasters. I think it's because Japan has these natural disasters that they're probably one of the most prepped countries for these things more than most countries who don't normally get them. I don't know, you can't live in fear. That's just kind of what I feel like. I don't know. Thoughts? Yeah, I agree. You know, like, yeah. I want this video to show people that as someone who lives in Japan, I willingly choose to stay here regardless of any of the natural disasters because I don't let that control me because anywhere you live, it's going to have something and I don't let the cons outweigh the pros when I live here. So that's just kind of like my little spiel of this outro. What else should I, uh, what else should I add? Subscribe. Yeah.